Hi, this is MXUX. This is um, 10 more things about ride stock or Lordstown Motors that, uh, that you don't already know. Um, there was an announcement today. The stock went up. They're, they've done, they're going to be doing even more hiring. I um, Before that announcement, I went over their uh, job postings and I did a bit of content analysis. And I'll just give you the breakdown that I came up with. They're going to have three locations. They're Lordstown, Ohio, uh, you know, Farmington Hills, Michigan, which is Detroit, and Irvine, California. Uh, in Lordstown, they initially had the 33 positions posted, uh, mostly engineering positions, and these are manufacturing related. These are uh, inspectors, process engineering, paint stamping, quality control, these types of things. Um, they also are going to engineer the hub motor, their version, they have licensed this basic design, they're going to engineer their version of the hub motor at this location. And um, the new news today was that they're also going to manufacture their own batteries there. Um, in uh, Michigan, they're going to do HR purchasing, they're going to do the... Uh, design there, the CAD and so forth, the final designs uh, and the uh, simulations for certification and body design and so forth. In Irvine, California, uh, this was uh, just nine positions and uh, it was a um, basically a cloud computing center and these there was a number of engineers and programmers here uh, nine positions that we're going to set up a connected vehicle and they have a fleet proprietary fleet software that runs off of the connected vehicle and also offering up uh, vehicle updates and so forth uh, the press release today mentioned that they're adding to this a service center uh, a vehicle service center there uh, their first one that's going to serve the southern california uh, fleet market uh, the the motor and the battery and the frame and the body, everything is going to be made in Ohio, and uh, including the batteries. So this is a, um, you know, the Tesla Tesla model, uh, and uh, they're going to have control over everything, and they're going to make everything from start to finish. I'm sure they'll outsource and buy some some components and so forth, but the point is, it's very much based on a like a Tesla model. And that Lordstown plant for the motor development and other things, they, they have a test track there, which is, I think, pretty interesting. And uh, also, um, in the press release today, I had quoted a figure of that plant having a capacity of, of making uh, 500,000 uh, vehicles a year. That's internal combustion engine vehicles. Steve Burns said today in this press release that the uh, plant... Um, has the capacity of making 600,000 EVs. So that's 100,000 more units a year. So that's Shanghai. Again, they want to get up to 500,000. So it's 100,000 more than that. Um, and the way this all breaks down is Detroit is going to do the basic auto stuff. They're going to do the safety systems, all the stuff they you know that Detroit's been doing in regular automobiles forever uh, they're gonna do there and just without the drivetrain so that makes sense it should be very efficient the talents there and so forth um, you know this truck is just a basic uh, body on frame design and um, uh, the wheel hubs actually mount on regular spindles wheel spindles the wheel hub motors so what you have is it like a box frame uh, battery in the center and uh, a motor at each corner that's it on top of that you have the uh, the truck itself the truck body so um, it's a, it's really really a, a design that's well suited to using an old ice uh, manufacturing facility as well because that's a, been a standard way of uh, manufacturing internal combustion engine uh, vehicles forever so um, it should be a pretty quick conversion, I would think, uh, and, and it should work pretty smoothly uh, to build these trucks there. Uh, Irvine, California, again, um, the news today was that uh, uh, basically 
uh, they're going to launch the endurance in Southern California. And this is going to be the first place in the country, they say September next year, I think is the date they gave, where the, this is going to be the first production EV. I think Elon Musk is going to try to beat him on that, but I don't know. We'll see. Um, but they're going to launch in Southern California, Los Angeles. And uh, they say it's f uh, favorable market conditions here. This is one of the largest um, Tesla ownership. They're, they're all over out here. And uh, as well, um, you know, the Governor Newsom has, has made an order of saying that they want to go full, full electric by such and such a date. I don't know if that's going to hold up. But in any case, they feel there's the very favorable conditions to release uh, the endurance pickup truck here. So they're going to have uh, their first service center in this location as well. And um, so they're going to have the cloud computing. And uh, part of that cloud computing they mentioned on there is an infotainment system. So I guess that's for for the, um, uh, you know, the public uh, consumption versus the fleet consumption. I'm not sure. But anyway, uh, that's how that's going to roll. And um, you can... Uh, uh, the press release was out today. The stock was up. It basically, you can read it for yourself. I saw another site where they were just reading the press release. I mean, you can you can take a look at it yourself. They're going to be hiring about 1,100 people at the Lordstown plant, and that that's the big news. And I think they've already got plans to hire about 600. And then um, the other big news was the pre-orders increased uh, from 40k to uh, 50k which is an increase of like 10,000 units. And I, I had just checked it the other day. It must be in a day or two. So um, they don't specify whether this is individual or fleet orders. But I believe um, at some point, I remember the Model 3, uh, everyone was, um, uh, Kathy Woods and the rest of them were talking about the, I believe they had 40K pre-orders uh, for the Model 3. So along the same lines. Um, I'm going to go out on a limb here and make a prediction on the, you know, Tesla wants to produce a $25,000 car. And uh, he says he's going to produce it in Shanghai, and and that's their goal, to get down to that price point. I am betting that uh, Elon Musk is going to use hub motors on that car, because that is, that is one of the things he can do, uh, besides moving to a two-door hatchback. Um to uh, to um, uh, limit these production costs and get that get hit that price point and um, you know he'll say something like well we, we you know this is our economy model we don't want to cheapen our, our we have our million you know they do have a million mile motor uh, but um, you know we don't want to cheapen our top line models with this motor configuration but actually I think it's a I think it's a superior motor configuration. And again, I just saw another interview with Bill Monroe, and he said the top three things he's thinking about, one of them is the new hub motor design for electric vehicles. So, you know, he's the man. Um, this this hub motor is, it's, it's hard to understand. It's like, um, uh, I like to say, it's like, it's like blockchain or, or or Bitcoin, you know, nobody really understands how it works. So I'm going to try to um, go over this. And I did a bit of research on. Let me see if I can explain it. So the idea is you've got a, a hub on each wheel, and this has a motor in it, and these motors uh, apply torque or you know rotation, uh, or they use the regenerative braking function to slow the wheel. Uh, so they either speed up or slow the wheel and they do this on each wheel and they do it on each wheel independently uh, that's kind of the rub um, the hub motor has a it's got a disc brake caliper in it it's got a disc brake rotor uh, it's got a main bearing it fits you know on a regular uh, spindle if you ever changed your um, wheel bearings and uh, it's got a controller on it so it's all in one contained unit and they've tested these through weather conditions and dirt and all kind of stuff they're according to their testing very reliable and they got three connections i think they have a power collect connection they have a cooling line connection and they have a um 
a control wire that goes to like a, a central control center but uh, that feeds some sort of signals to it. But um, these are independently uh, controlled brushless motors. And the example I want to give is like, you know these drones, like these camera drones, these people fly around, you see how they move so quickly? Those are independently controlled electric hub motors. Uh, but instead of having tires on them, they have propellers on them. And so if you envision um, how that works when they how quickly those turns are made and how they they victor those engine thrusts to get those uh, drones to turn and everything that's what this truck is doing and like I say but instead of it's got the same kind of setup but instead of having propellers it's got tires so you got traction performance and you get that instantaneous response uh, with the brushless motor and the electronic controls. I don't know if that makes sense. So here's here's another attempt at an explanation. All right. So let's let's say you're driving your pickup truck, uh, your endurance pickup truck, and you are coming up, and I don't know, you're going 40 miles an hour or whatever, and there's a hard left turn coming up. Um, the, the system by employing torque or, or, or slowing with applied regen is going to operate each wheel separately and instantaneously and simultaneously. And the way it's going to do that, when you come up to this turn, it's going to say, all right, the s computer sensors are going to, excuse me, the computer sensors are going to get all the input data and, the, and, the, and they might make the, uh, the right front wheel uh, go 20 miles an hour. And they might make the left, uh, rear left wheel go 15 miles an hour. And they might make the uh, rear right wheel go 25 miles an hour. And the front left wheel may be going zero miles an hour. So they're going to they're gonna vector the thrust of these wheel motors so that in addition to you turning, making the turn, uh, the truck is going to pirouette on that uh, front left tire to make this left-hand turn. And it's going to power through the turn for the duration of the turn automatically. You don't have to think about it or anything. And then it's going to go back to normal or whatever the road demands. And this is all automatic. And uh, you can enable different modes in it, but you can also turn it off. But this is the kind of uh, performance you're going to be able to get out. I mean, this is... This is groundbreaking. I mean, this is going to enable uh, turns and, uh, and that type of performance. I mean, it's going to be sports car level, really. And uh, the other thing uh, about the hub wheel motor configuration, there's going to be an in-cab in um, control screen. And you're going to be able to choose two-wheel drive, or four-wheel drive, I'm sure you're going to be able to choose whether you want the front two motors to drive or the rear two motors to drive. You're going to be able to choose sport and other modes, you know, snow, probably so on and so forth. And there's going to be uh, real-time monitoring. There's going to be, you know, some type of graphic display there that's going to tell you what the system is doing. And uh, also you have the option of turning it off. So anyway, I think this is a really 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 good system uh, for an electric vehicle I think you know until something else comes around it's going to be hard to beat this and what, one cool design element that comes along with these hub motors is that uh, it allows the body of the truck to be lower because it doesn't have to create space for these inline um, motors and reduction uh, gear reductions that are in the Teslas and the other trucks, the Rivians and so forth. So, um, I mean, uh, you'll have the option to lower it, I'm sure, if you want to, or um, they may put a may put a function in it that will allow you to raise or lower it. But um, this is uh, gives you a whole new aesthetic uh, for the truck. So I think uh, 
If you look at the new F-150, for example, the electric prototype they're showing, it's got, um, I mean, they got the body, and then under the body they have it spray painted black. There's another, you know, looks like 12, 14 inches of frame there, and then it finally gets to the ground. So this thing is up there, you know what I mean? And, um, you know, so is the Cybertruck, but of course the Cybertruck will lower, but I don't know, I don't know if it will lower, will it lower like that when it's driving? I guess it will, I don't know, but uh, maybe not. But anyway, the point is, this is a, a great aesthetic. I think uh, it gives the truck a different stance and a different look.